everybody. I'm Tom Vassell. Z Garcia. Hello. Sam Healy. Welcome back, folks. I'm excited because it's Friday. Woo! I'm excited our Kickstarter's over. <laughs> Double woo! Uh, it's good. We'll go back to normal for a while and get some stuff done And here. we're about to do a top ten. A Triple battle. Who? Which Triple has the word woo. exciting in the title. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm winding myself. Too many whoos. I'm winding myself. That's right. Same word, different pronunciation, different meaning. That's, that's crazy. And that's what you're in for. <laughs> a lesson in linguistics. <laughs> All right. So we often get asked, you know, like, hey, you guys still get excited when you see new games. And probably when we get 1,500 to 2,000 games a year, it's not as exciting. Every game right. is not as exciting. Sure. Yes, correct. And we also read about game announcements every day. Yes. Yeah. But I there's... S- I saw a post. I'm sorry. I didn't mean it. I saw a post a, a couple of days ago where somebody had posted their uh, box arrival something or other, and, and they were holding four games that they had gotten. and they were just really excited about it. And I'm like, yeah, that hasn't happened in a long time for us. We're I mean, like really psyched about something? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it just... It happens to me every, like, once a month at there's least. There's still times where, like, where I'll bring a game and you'll be like, oh, yeah. Well, right, yeah, that's true. Yeah, but, you know, I guess so. Getting a shipment at home that you clicked at the store and bought and you're waiting yeah. for it to arrive and then opening it, yes, it's been a while. All right. But... Even though we are getting more jaded, we try not to be. And there are things, I do get excited about new games. Someone will say, here's a new game. I'm like, ooh, well, that's, that sounds interesting. These are the 10 things that get us excited about games, new games. Mm-hmm. I expect there to be a lot of overlap and also half and half overlap. Like, you might say something and that's kind of half of one of my yes. points. Yes. I don't know. I would, I would imagine there will be a lot of overlap. There should but, be. But more importantly, I think, is the order. I bet my order for sure is different than a lot of people's and things. Mm-hmm. You know, because it, it ha- the box has to be red. That's what. <laughs> that's number one. That's a spoiler, man. <laughs> the bo- well, I mean, some the of box mine... has to be red was actually my number eleven. Was it? All right. <laughs> well, here we go. <laughs> it's, someone says. Someone said one of yours has, has the word pandemic in the title. <laughs> <laughs> that actually uh, might be on the list. Uh, yeah, maybe. All right. Well, let's get started with Samuel. Number 10. All right. So my number 10 is probably not one that you might readily think that I would be bringing to the table. But over the course of the years, this one has really kind of settled in. And uh, if you watch my unboxings. Empress 4, Empress 4, Empress 4. No. That's late. That's higher. If you're watching my unboxings, this is one of the things that I always kind of flip through to make sure that it's it's the rule book. Well-written rule books is something that really kind of makes... Well, that lady is definitely not following that. I don't know what that means. Oh, she's that's editing. That's editing, you're right. yes. I do know what that means. I used to, I had to learn all those rule marks. Well-written rule books are something that are very exciting for me because that means I'm going to be able to get to my enjoyment of the game that much quicker. Uh, so that's, good. that's one of the things is when I'm flipping through the rule book, I'm looking at how are things laid out? Do are they using illustrations? Or is it just a wall of text? Um, is, does it read like a technical manual? These are all things that I'm looking at, even in the unboxings, uh, just to see if this is something I'm going to be excited to try to get to the table. Because I know that if it's laid out well, if it's written well, I'm going to be able to experience the enjoyment that it's supposed to be giving me that much quicker. So that's my number 10, well-written rule books. I, I didn't put this on my list. I considered it, but I, I thought more, I was going to say a shorter rule book gets me excited right like the 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 opposite of that is if i get and there's like 80 pages of rules i'm like oh Oh boy yeah but but a pretty rule book with pictures and stuff helps unfortunately though the longer rule books they're probably not well written because they're more verbose than they should be Mm -hmm. yeah but i've also read rules where i was like where are the (laughs) rules you left out all sections yeah yeah all right my number 10 is a type of game, and this is racing, racing games. If a game oh, is really? a racing game, I'm more likely to mm. be excited about giving it a go. There's not that many racing games. I just games. say, there really isn't. There's just not that many. Um, and especially 
there's not that many that get made now. You know, there's a few genres of games or styles of games that have really continued to grow. Worker placement is apparently an evergreen now. And deck building, of course. And, you know, even uh, things like trick-taking, which I thought was basically done, has had a major resurgence lately. I thought trick-taking would be on your list. Uh, it's not. It's not. Uh, there's a lot of them. That's partly it. Do you mean like simulations or just games where you're trying to get to a certain goal first? Oh, that's no, a good no, question. I, mean, so I, I don't necessarily need the end game to be a you hit this and you win. There's no scoring. That's good, too. But, no, I mean, actually about racing. So thematically wise. Yeah, thematically right. about racing. It could be, you know, horse racing, cars, spaceships. I don't care what's, what about the vehicle is. about race for is. Eldorado? Uh, Does that count? That's a racing. It's a foot race, I guess. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, um, all of those games, that style of game really excites me. So when a game shows up and it's about racing, I'm like, ooh, let's see what they did. You know, because it's hard to get them right also. It's a tricky genre. So yeah, my number 10, racing games. My number 10, and I did these actually in order of importance. And at the bottom are the things that, I, you know, they could drop out and be something else. Like mm -hmm. you said, racing. Mine is actually something Z makes fun of me about, but I really do like it when it's in a game. And that's grids. Yeah, I don't yeah, know yeah. what it is. <laughs> if a game has a grid, I'm like, oh, that's interesting to me. Yeah. If you're using the grid to get resources or to place on a map or to play bingo or whatever, I, there's just something about it ever since Battleship. Mm -hmm. I always thought Battleship was fascinating because I had a grid. I don't really care for Battleship now, but yeah, I just like that whole crossing things off or picking a row or a column, something like that. Right. Just that, that fascinates me. It does. I can't help it. If the game has a grid, I'll be like, I want to know more. Have you played Santa Maria yet? I forget. Yeah, I did. And I like it again yeah, because it has that cool that grid aspect to it. Very much about a grid, yeah. Yeah. That's cool. All righty. Number nine. All right, my number nine is an overarching storyline. Now, if I can tell that it's going to have a storyline from the very beginning, I want, or you know, from what I know about the game, uh, I know there's going to be a storyline. I know how this play is going to connect to that play because of this thing that's uh, carrying over from one episode to the next. Uh, then that's going to draw me in. Things like uh, pan uh, Pandemic Legacy, um, things like Time Stories. Uh, these are all. Uh, thematically rich games that oh. are going to carry me through not just with mechanisms it's going to get me involved in the story that's going on not just what I'm doing in the game but if what I'm doing in the game fits well with that storyline that that's even better but the storyline is enough for me I don't need meaty mechanisms uh, I don't need that. I want a story. I want uh, inclusion. I want involvement in the storyline. And so if, if, if I can tell or if what I know about a game tells me that there's going to be a storyline overarching, whether it's uh, scenarios or it's a campaign or whatever it might be, that gets me excited about a game as well. You know, I actually, I was thinking about, I didn't put this on my list. Um, but you should have. Well, no, actually, I thought that first, but then no, because I did, I did my list from the perspective of I'm either looking at the game in the store or I unbox and open it and get me excited, and I'm finding that there's a lot of games that I'm like, eh, I might have a story or not, but I have no idea until I play it. Mm -hmm. I think for so me... So I don't know if the game has that story until I play it. <clears throat> yeah, but he's, I mean, the promise of a story, I guess, is what Sam's saying. See, the, the thing for me is I'm, I get excited about that, too. But I get just as just as often burned by it as I <laughs> as I get excited. Yeah. Well, that's what I mean. I mean. So therefore, I don't get excited till I no. know. A lot of games have a story, and I'm like, oh, cool, a story, and then the story ends up for me being in detriment. <laughs> you know, it's like, oh, you know, this one part didn't feel exciting because they're saving it or whatever. Let thief all go, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that one was you know, just one single really long episode. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> My number nine is also a style of game or a mechanism of game. I promise we'll move on from this. Uh, and this is drafting games. If a game is a drafting game, yeah. I am excited. Again, a little bit of an underutilized mechanism. There's been, you know, more than racing I think games, in recent years, there's a whole lot more of them. There has been more, there's been more of them. But um, 
it's still a really exciting mechanism for me and, and it's one that is very involving for all the players usually at the very same time it's a mechanism that feels in many ways sort of self-balancing you know if you're given a hand of cards you pluck the best one out of there but if you had a really strong hand of cards the next person also gets a really strong hand of cards when you hand those off if you had a really bad hand yeah you have to take a bad card but so will the next person after you because yeah. the rest of that hand is bad too so i like that i like that it's sort of a, a self-balancing mechanism and it's just they usually make for really quick games so uh drafting games is something i get very excited about preach all right my number nine is another very specific one i'm gonna get a little more general as we go along um but if i open the box and there are game trades in it i automatically assume the game's cool the actual company i'm game talking trades. about the company game trades yeah now i know that's really specific yeah, yeah. but i'm almost 100 percent on this one <laughs> wow. like when i open these up or it doesn't have to be game trays if it's a uh, something like this where there's a plastic trays because and almost any time a company goes to the effort to do this it means they put effort into every corner of sure, that game sure and you know from the panasaurus one to uh, Mex vs. Minions to the new Dice Throne, and you're just like, Wasteland oh, Express, Wasteland Express, Express, right. And you open that up, and then usually the rest of the pieces follow mm -hmm. on beyond that. This seems like a dumb thing, but I'm just saying, if I open a box and there's game trades, I'm like, oh, these guys put effort into this game. Mm -hmm. Sure. And that's just something that gets me pumped. And it seems odd, but it's kind of like a telltale sign. Yeah, that's, that's cool. That's, I love seeing those things, yeah. So, game trades. <laughs> All right, my number eight is, I don't know, I don't think it's an actual mechanism per se, but it is app integration. Really? Yeah, app huh. integration. Now, unfortunately, it hasn't really, like one of these that's up here was a, dis, was a disappointment for me, and that's XCOM. But the other one, Mansions of Madness 2nd Edition, that was cool. A cool mm -hmm. integration. Uh, the app had a lot of, you know, it had sound effects. It had, uh, I guess, you could, like a soundtrack that was going on behind mm -hmm. it to give it uh, a little bit of more of an ambiance going on there. Uh, but even, even app integration like what's in uh, Rising 5, where it just helps you keep track of the different changes that you've made during the course of the game. Mm -hmm. Even that level of an app integration is something that goes, ooh, cool, I like that. Because you're, you're allowing for the involvement of technology in our hobby, but it's not overtaking the game. Um, so I, I really do enjoy that. Uh, so if I can see, if I know that a game is going to have app integration, especially if that app is going to be, first of all, free for download, because I don't want to put more money into the game uh, mm -hmm. than, I've, than I've already put into it. Uh, I've, I'm really excited about that because I like the involvement of, of technology that's available to us without it overtaking the game. You really got to play Chronicles of Crime. I think you would like it. I do, sure. too. I just mm. haven't got around to yeah. it yet. Yeah, absolutely. That's a good one. No, but I mean, I like Detective. Right. Um, a yeah, lot. yeah. And that, a... that, that, that's kind of a stretch calling it app integration because you're not really using a specific uh, kind of app. I would call it because the computer program that you're like yeah. into is this, yeah. it's very similar. It's technological so. integration, whatever. All right, my number eight, actually, one of the uh, two examples Sam had up here, uh, Mansions of Madness, would be a very good one for this. And that is I get excited about a game that has a horror setting. I like horror settings. Here's the thing. I hate horror movies. That's really weird. This is really weird it's to me. I weird. hate horror movies because they have the ability to scare me. Right? I mean, they put together the, the terrifying realistic images and then also the music and the sound cues and they are affecting. They scare you. But I like reading I like reading horror. Really? That doesn't scare you? Oof. No. No. Reading scares me. A lot. No, I like reading horror. That's fine. It's more descriptive. And then I, um, yeah, but it's I, I have my own gate. You know what I mean? I can make it's it as music. scary as I want. When you read, I'm gonna come back around. Doo -doo -doo, then I'm gonna touch you in the shoulder. <laughs> I don't think that would freak me out. Yeah. Uh, but and then board games. I also think those themes are, you know, interesting and sort of out there and bizarre stuff. And you know, I like all that stuff. So a horror setting, Mansions of Madness. The others, uh, 
Deep Madness, all of these, you know, and a lot of them are Cthulhu-esque now or use that, you know, H.P. Lovecraft mythos, but it doesn't have to. That, you know, all, all those kinds of settings, for the most part, I do like them. So, uh, horror setting is my number eight. I think I can be very clear this will not be a crossover. Yes, yes. All right. There are a lot of trite phrases that I don't agree with, like, don't cry for spilt milk. Whoever said that didn't buy milk because it's super expensive. Um, but the other I disagree with is don't judge a book by its cover. My number eight, the box cover. Uh, I don't care. I definitely judge games by their covers. Mm -hmm. I'm wrong often, but a really cool cover gets me excited about the game. It just does. Right. I look at it, like, for example, Scythe. When, when they first announced Scythe and showed the cover of Scythe, I knew nothing about the game. And I was like, that looks amazing. Yeah. There's like people there, and it's like in Russia, and in the back there's mechs fighting, and it, the artwork was fantastic. Whenever I see a, a cool new cover, and I, you're, me and Z especially will commiserate, but like, look at how cool this cover is, yeah, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. It just looks neat. Now, again, like Sam said, I've been burned by them occasionally, you know, <laughs> uh, a lot actually. But I, it, a boring cover, again, I'm, I'm, sometimes I'm doing the opposites on these. A boring cover is one of the things that will turn me off from a game. Right. I won't even play it. And you say, well, you shouldn't judge it by its cover. No, you do. Whatever people may say, you judge stuff by their covers. If you're a publisher making a game, you need to make that cover look amazing. And so, I mean, it's not number one on my list, but it is number eight, a cover. All right. Number seven. My number seven is a mechanism, but when I see that I'm going to be able to roll dice in a game, that gets me excited because I enjoy Monopoly. that mechanism that is not one of the games that... It roll and move, I believe is what you meant to write. No. <laughs> dice rolling, when there's going to be more than just determining how many actions you get. Or <laughs> <laughs> uh, determining how far along a board you're going to be moving. No, that's not it. Uh, usually it's some type of combat resolution or even uh, with a game like Stone Age where it's going to determine how many resources you're going to get from going out and foraging or uh, mining or what have you. That's good uh, and, and enjoyable for me as well. Um, Would you include Kingsburg in this? No, not really. Okay. Because that that's Kingsburg is more of a worker placement game. The number on the dice just determines where you can place. So your you workers. like rolling dice as like a deterministic thing. I'm gonna yeah. do some action or attack or something. I get to roll dice. Yes. That's I why he likes Warhammer. Because Warhammer, you like roll half the dice in the world. <laughs> that is true. I can I can remember rolling like. They need playing, to make a dice gun. Playing orcs, rolling like thirty. 30 dice at one time. Yes, I do that remember that. Awesome. 30 dice at one time to yes. determine combat, I'm guessing? Well, yeah. you're like, boom, throw all these dice. You're like, all right, these are hits. Okay, put the rest of the dice down. I'm down to like eight dice. Yeah. Boom. Yes. Uh, now we see which one's hit. There's always the two roll <laughs> got thing. It, got it. It's right. a two-step process. But uh, dice rolling is one of the first things that pops up if it, uh, that makes me interested in the game. Now, if I delve deeper and I find out that it's one of those other reasons that I don't like dice rolling, well then, that, that'll be a turnoff. But, uh, on the onset, it's always always a, a positive thing. Yeah, that's a good one. All right, my number seven throw my, my weirdest pick, my sort of dorkiest pick, and it probably shouldn't excite me, but I'd be lying if I said it doesn't, I, I'm not interested a little more when a game has expansions. Really? A I wouldn't game, expect you to say this one. Yeah, I don't know what it is exactly. I can try to explain it. I think it's because if a game has expansions, there's the promise of more later if I really like the game. Okay. Right? It's this idea of this game, you know, if a game is looks great, I'm excited about it, and that's all there is for it, that's cool. That's exciting. If all those parameters are the same... And there's an expansion out there that adds a new alien race, a new style of combat, a new racing track, whatever. Then I'm more excited about that original game because, again, there's that promise of, boy, if I really enjoy this, I got more to look forward to. You know, it's that idea. So I am excited about that. And now I know if a game is brand new and it has an expansion that might... <laughs> say something else about that game you know hopefully that expansion really shouldn't belong in the base game 
Yeah. But it's still exciting. I don't care. Even if it was supposed to belong to the base game, I'm still like, hmm, I wonder what's in that one, you know? So, yeah, I'm excited about expansions for games, and that, 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 um, I'll perk up a little bit at the idea of, you know, there being more out there. So that's my number seven. Ten years ago, Tom would have put this as his number one. Uh, but, yeah, really? But now, not on my list because Kickstarter has ruined this for me. Every game yeah. has expansions now. So I'll be like, they'll be like, do you know this game comes with ten expansions? I'm like, I, I, but is the game good? I don't care if there's expansions. Yeah. Sure. I used to be yeah. more excited because it seemed like that was the measurement of if a game was good, it got expansions. But now everything has expansions. Yeah. Oh, sure. Yeah. Here's a and, dumb card game. There's more expansions in the game. And they're really not expansions that way. Because for me, you know, you like you were saying, uh, expansions were kind of a test of time, right? Mm -hmm. Where mm -hmm. there's there was a following. There is a, a group of people that, that like the game, and it's large enough to warrant putting more thought into the game. Correct. And that's not really necessarily that's, the case anymore. There, it still happens from time to time, don't get me wrong, but expansions don't really do it so much for me anymore simply because, you know, like, like, like Tom was saying, they're just... It seems like every game comes with expansions. Right. Now, on the flip side, when I do love a game and then they come out with an expansion, I'm pumped. Yeah. Right. I love expansions for games I like. I'm saying initially that doesn't get me interested. And in fact, it's actually a detractor when a game comes and there's 15 expansions and it came out and there's that many expansions. I'm like, that just seems like a lot of work. Mm. <laughs> All right. Oh, <laughs> mine. All right, so I said the cover of the box for number eight. So number seven, more important than the cover, the is the back. back of the box. That is ah. it. <laughs> now listen, this is nice. serious. Because if I look at the back of a box, and there's, a lot, again, a lot of these are opposites, right? Where sure. I'm, I'm, I'm going with the negative things. And it doesn't show me a picture of the game, I'm automatically not interested. Oh. I don't know what's inside that box. Actually, think about it, I probably could have put the weight of the box, because heavy boxes get me excited. <laughs> Like really? You're like, Ooh, there's what's a in, lot there? in here? <laughs> uh, the opposite of that yeah. is like you get a box and it feels like air. You're like, oh. anyway. But the big, back, yeah. the way you write how the game is played, the stuff you put on the back, but a picture of the game in action, a picture of the artwork that can get me really pumped. And I cannot tell you how many companies don't do this. Yeah. They put like nothing on the back or just some descriptions or advertising their other games sometimes. And it's like, who cares about any of that? Show me what's in this box. Like this is, I picked a good one here, War of the Ring. Shows you the board in full action and the dice and the, shows you some of the miniatures that come with it and the artwork and it's like, oh, and that has nice description there. I'm like, yeah, I want to play this game. Right. But there's the worst, a lot of games out there. The worst for me is when the, the cover of the game and the back of the box don't seem to match. When you pick up a game and yeah. you go, ooh, yeah. yeah, look at the Space Warrior, you turn it over and the game looks like go. <laughs> you know, you're like, uh, I feel deceived. You know, I'm like, right. what's what's up here? Now, I understand that's your thematic concept, but still, every time that happens to me at a game store, I pick it up and flip it over. I always feel like mm, they got me. <laughs> well, that's the thing. I don't judge a game by its cover. I judge it by its cover and the back. Right. <laughs> if they're both good, the game could still not be great. Sure. But I feel a lot more confident. So my number... Uh, seven, the back of the box. Number six. All right, so my number six is modular boards. Mm. Ha! Someone called that you were going to say that, I think. Really? Yeah. Okay. Well, modular boards is something that I really do look forward to. Now, the example that I have up there is the picture is It's an Heroescape. amazing game that we all love. I, I enjoy the game. I'm, I'm not saying that, but that goes a little bit over the top it's because it takes so long to set up and then it well, tear down. Well, that's almost terrain rather than a modular board. <laughs> True. I understand that. But it's the board. But it You're is the board. playing on that. And if you enjoy kids' games, I think that's a fine pick. Wow troll much no I'm anyway, kidding I take it back permanent it won't come off for the rest of your life <laughs> the other <laughs> part the other part of the hero escape thing is that it that that modular board takes a lot of storage space that yeah yeah so I mean it's there's no proof of that moving on yeah uh, 
maybe on one of our next live Q&As, we can show how much storage Ooh. space HeroScape actually <laughs> takes up. Camera won't. Let's go on. Anyways. Yes. Anyway, uh, I do enjoy modular boards for a number of different reasons. It, it, it uh, touches on this idea of um, exploration. Some yeah. games will use modular boards to do exploration. Fallout was one of those where, uh, mm -hmm. recently at least, where all of the boards are turned face down for most of them. And uh, then as you move throughout the board, they're flipped over and... I kind of like that, though. It's like, ooh, is this the one? Oh. Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, is it the, the sun? The one that we just played live the other day, Claustrophobia. Yeah, that's got really good. 42 or whatever it is. Um, 1643, man. Come on, who doesn't know that? Well, uh, 1643. I was close. I said. You said all the same numbers. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't. 1436 or something? I don't know. I don't know what it was. But anyway, uh, that is a good example of what it is as well because yeah. you choose, what is it, 12 or 14 uh, boards. You don't use all of them. Well, so, for that one scenario. Yeah, anyway. for the one scenario, right? And uh, you, you don't actually place them out on the board, so you don't know how they're going to come out. Additionally, and this is one of the things that killed me in the game, mm -hmm. uh, was you could actually get yourself into a corner and mm -hmm. you have to backtrack. And, and I, it worked against me that time, but I still enjoyed it because right. it was a, it was, it's a good mechanism in it. And it, it was a very thematic mechanism as well. So modular boards, my number six. That's a really good one, actually. I might have put that on my list. Yeah, I, I like it a lot. love exploration. This... The, like you said, it's such a thematic thing. You're in a not game in a tunnel that you've never been in. Right. You don't know if the next corner leads to a dead end. Right. And nothing, no mechanism out there is as good at replicating something and as simple as <laughs> yeah. flipping a tile. Right. It's just right on. So that's a good one. All right, my number six is tableau building in games. I love Woo! a game. Woo! In which you now I hate this I hate what this is called I'll tell you it sounds so it sounds, it sounds so, uh, so pretentious snooty. Snooty. yeah <laughs> I'm Tab building a tableau I wish there was a different term for this and I think it was Race for the Galaxy that I first read this I in. think it was actually in the rule book so yeah, people a lot. used it it was in the rule book a lot it was like oh you're building your tableau I'm like what <laughs> all right you're building do they mean like it's the a table What's in front of you <laughs> all right but that's it's stuck tableau building. But I do love a game that, during the first turn, I have a couple of little things I can do. And by the fifth turn, I'm just a beast. You know, I'm like, oh, I'm going to trigger this action here. That makes me a whole lot of coal. And that coal, I'm going to burn it in, the, in this, you know, machine. And now that produces bullets or something. I like that. I like tableau building. Having all these options built up for me. Being able to get it all working. You know, it's, it feels... In, industrious it feels industrial but it also feels industrious and i like that feeling in a game so you know imperial settlers does it 51st state race for the galaxy like we said but there's tons of games out there that do it and it's not always cards though i probably prefer it on cards but there's you know games with tiles that do it i i just find it fascinating some games overdo it for me like gizmos for example is he's wrong that, i'm wrong um <laughs> But it overdid it I like that. for let's, me. Let's record that. You know, I um, it, I found it, it it went too far with the tableau building. It was too much to do near the end of the game. For the most, most part, I, I do enjoy it. So that's my six, tableau building. My number six is very simple. Z said he likes horror. I'm. This is the opposite of that almost in a sense. In a sense, that I just want something new and different and unique. So un a different, unique theme. Uh -huh. I'm tired of seeing the same stuff over and over. And with the vast amount of games that are out there, we're going to see a lot of the same stuff over. It doesn't matter what your favorite theme is, you're going to probably see a lot of it. Yeah, right? the problem with that is there are so many games that there are... It would be hard to find a theme that is not represented somewhere. But, so when I do see that, I'm interested. So, like, for example, this one, Holding on to Trouble Life of Billy Kerr, you're trying to keep this guy alive and learn his yes, life story. I've never story. seen that before. Yes. And so that gets me excited about a game when someone says, this is something new and different. Even, like, stuff fables. You know, you're a bunch of toys defending this girl, you know, from monsters under the bed. Okay, maybe there's a game about that, but not many, That's if true. any. So even if not many, like, even yesterday we, or Tuesday, we played that game we're putting fires out in town. 
there isn't that many of those games. So that theme makes me more excited about the game. Sure. The fewer there is of that type of theme, depending. There's some themes I'm not interested in at all. Mm -hmm. But a, a good one I, I think would be uh, Predator Porter, right? There's almost no games about the fashion industry. So when I see something, I'm like, huh, I'm interested. Right. I'm just interested in different stuff. There's a lot of generic fantasy. There's a lot of zombies. There's a lot of Vikings and, uh, and definitely horror. You yeah. know, you're not hurting for that. Although I would argue that horror is mostly zombies and Cthulhu. If you take those two out, there ain't much left. That's true. But that's true. Uh, but yeah, just a new, different theme. Number five. All right, my number five is. Uh, Probably my most generic one so far, and that is uh, nice components. <laughs> that's, not not that's, good components, nice ones. Yeah, I mean, I mean, like nice, nice soft components. Nice components. I mean, th these are that's cute components. Components oh. that go just a step beyond your normal fare, I guess you could say. Uh, more than just wooden cubes, more than just uh, a wooden disc, or a plastic plastic disc or plastic cubes or whatever it might be although i would say the plastic is better than wood just for my more often than not not always but right. more Give often me than wooden not. minis but carve the guy sitting there carving each mini there you go <laughs> Woo! no anyway uh but this is not actually just talking about like player pieces or anything. I'm talking about everything in the game. Not just resources, not just this, but I'm talking about card quality. I'm talking about even the board quality. Um, and this is stuff that you don't really know before you open the box. So I know that it's probably not going to be on your list uh, or anything like that, but this is stuff that you can only find out after no, no, no. you kind of dug in. It, it, this would count for me because I would look at the box or open the box and be like, wow, these are okay. cool components. Yeah, right. Yeah. But um, stuff like Crusaders that will be done. You know, even the non deluxified version of the game has good components in it. I mean, really nice components. Um, you have different shapes for the buildings, you have um, wooden sculpts for all of the, your different knights that are going around, and those are really nice components. Now, the deluxe version is like, way way better those aren't nice those are deluxe uh, yes yeah, true right uh, but that's number four nice components is something that always uh, gets me excited about a game because uh for me and we'll probably get to more of this later but if a game looks good it's more fun to play period yeah i know that there's a lot of people who disagree with that but yeah. yeah i mean yeah it's in our opinion of course right. but yeah, I I agree. I mean, I uh, there's it, it, there's no question. I get ex more excited about nicer components. Though lately, I have to say, because of Kickstarter, largely, it no longer really translates to this is probably a good game. Right. And more often than not, you look at a game and you go, yeah, they had access to good manufacturers. That doesn't. It, I'm having it hard. I'm having a harder time drawing a conclusion that this is probably a good game from that. You know what I mean? Mm. Um, however, you're right about gorgeous components, and my number five is that I'm calling it Stark and Beautiful Games. <laughs> okay, that is not the same thing. It's similar though, um, and it's I. I mean, not just the cover, and these are all examples of covers that I find to be stark and also very attractive, but it's also. A general idea of the look of the game. A game that all looks like it was made with a singular purpose in mind. You know, that there is a, a an aesthetic choice behind the way everything looks. None of it was accidental. You know, they didn't just send this one section out and farm it out to someone who drew something and sent it back. It looks like nothing else in the game. You know, I'm talking about that. A very decisive look. I enjoy that in games. And that gives me more hope, actually, for a good game than, than nice components. Because you can sort of, you know, make those at the factories. Like, make these, make them look good. This card, put linen finish on there. 300, whatever, thickness. And those will look good. But this needs discussions. You know, if a game is going to look uniform and uh, just have that sort of, like, wow people worked on this and everybody was on the same page you know so that gets me really excited about games um so yeah that's my number five stark and beautiful 
<laughs> my number five is, uh, well, it's going to be kind of self-serving, but I don't care because if we didn't believe it. In, no, purple hats. I, no, no, I say if we didn't believe in it, we wouldn't have this job. But my number five is the review of a trusted friend. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, although he looks a little insane in that picture. <laughs> <laughs> Buying this game. <laughs> now, look. First of all, I, I think reviews are important. Again, I know it's self-serving, but if, if I didn't think reviews were important, we wouldn't have done them to begin sure, with. Right. That'd be foolish for us to do something and we're like, it's garbage. But for me, it, it makes a huge difference because there's lots of people out there who I don't trust. Not necessarily that I, I distrust them, but they're mouthpieces. I'll see on the internet, people are like, oh, this is great, great game, great game. That's hype. I back this game, it's great. It means nothing to me. Mm -hmm. But if someone I know and someone where we have similar tastes, they come to me like, I really love this game, blah, 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 blah. I mean, even Sam Rizzi, if they... Yeah, if it doesn't they, have to be a reviewer, by the way. Yeah, we just mean, like, well, no, someone I wrote who's... friend. Yeah, someone whose taste you understand. Yeah. But if they come... If, like, even if you guys are, you're like, this game is amazing, and you... I mean, and you, I can tell it's not just your typical. You're like, you're raving about it. I'll be like, huh. Okay. Well, I'm more interested than I was before. That, I mean, it, and that really works. I mean, advertisers know this. Word of mouth is one of the best ways to sell anything. Sure. And it really works for me. If I, I'll see buzz on games all over the internet, and sometimes I'm, I'm thinking, ah, it's just buzz. But then I'll watch. I mean, it could be Africa, it could be anybody, or it could just be someone who I like, and they wrote a comment, like that, a Facebook post. This game is great. Blah 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 blah. And they're super excited about it, and you can tell that they're really excited about it. That attracts me to a game. I'm like, oh, all right, all right. Maybe I should look more into this. I really, yeah, this is just important for me. So. Like review of a trusted you. friend. Time to start giving you a bunch of lies and be like, I'll bring some little rinky dink. I'm really excited about this. Do you trust me? <laughs> Try it. Well, I said, I said trust it. Oh. You're a friend. Ooh. I'm a friend. Ooh. Number four. Now, my number four follows closely on the coattails of number five. Um, but it is I a told you. little bit more the telling. Miniatures. <laughs> yeah, All right, well, miniatures. I, I would have put money that this was on your list. Come on now, that's <laughs> got to be in there. Miniatures. Wait. Oh, that's like a miniature setup? Yes, it is. That's a, mini that's a miniature diorama of a street in Tokyo. It looks like a photo. Go ahead and talk. Man. I just want to look at I just want to look at this yeah, picture. I, I, love, wow. I love looking at stuff like that. I love the different uh, pictures that you can see on the internet of, of perspective, where it's like a guy puts miniature uh, things on a board and takes them at a perspective where nature in the background or different buildings in the background fall in line with the same perspective. Yeah, I love cool. that kind of stuff. Uh, but miniatures in board games really get me excited um, because uh, and what you were saying about Kickstarter, it's kind of soured this a, yeah, little, bit. a little bit. You can have great miniatures in games, but it doesn't mean you're going to have a good game. But at the same time, at the very least, at the very least, if you've got good miniatures in the game, you bought some good miniatures. Yeah. Period. Uh, and you've got something concrete, physical, that you're going to be able to walk away from Probably this game plastic. From. I mean, well, yes. No, sorry. <laughs> Game comes with concrete I miniatures. Had to, I That'd had be to. super. Like, what's in this box? <laughs> That's true. Yeah, but uh, miniatures really just kind of uh, push it over the top for me, and they don't have to be big, huge, honking miniatures either. Cut I'm talking about wars. like 878 Vikings was more uh, interesting to me, not because of the Vikings, but because it came with little. I mean, we're talking this big miniatures of little Viking dudes that, uh, or English dudes, whatever, whichever side you're on, um, that you are manipulating throughout the course of the game. And that put it over the, the, the other two, the, the Revolutionary the War, and the one French and Indian cubes. War, and yeah, the, which had cubes. So again, it just, I like that game more, if only for that fact. Is they, this an opposite thing for you like it is for me? Like if a game could have had miniatures but has like standees, that irritates you? It it depends because games like Dead of Winter could have had miniatures right. easily, but they have standees. Doesn't bother me that much. Okay. Doesn't bother me that much because that's all. Would you play Blood Rage with standees? 
<laughs> no, because that would be a step backward. Sure, because it already exists. But that's if it that's had not come a good out example. With Sandys, would I have liked it as much? I don't know. That's a good question. Yeah, I don't know. But uh, yeah. miniatures always put it to the the next echelon for me. It's my number four. That's good stuff. All right, my number four. Everybody was talking about how I might have Pandemic on the list. I don't, but but. Kind of do. Cooperative games. Oh, okay. That's, um, not, that's not the same. Oh, but you still put Pandemic on the thing. I uh, put that with... That's uh, the new one, right? Fall of Rome, yeah. yeah. Um, cooperative games are still... I, you know, I could totally see myself making this list in a year and this slot... You know, slipping a point or two, a spot or two. And then maybe a year after that, slipping another point or two because... Boy, has this genre taken off. My goodness, just about every other game, it seems. Well, there's a lot of games that are not cooperative games, and then you get to the end, they're like, cooperative version. Yeah, there's a lot of that. Um, but I still get excited about a game that's cooperative, this idea of working together, of, of going up against something the game itself is bringing to the table that it poses a challenge made of cardboard and plastic and wooden pieces. That's still cool to me. And it's still gets at the root of playing games and, and imbuing them with the power to entertain you. Of, you know, again, pieces of cardboard and paper and plastic and made up rules you follow and somehow you're entertained. I think cooperative games really put that on a, on a pedestal for me and kind of highlight like, this can be entertaining, it's kind of mind blowing. Um, so I still like them. I still absolutely like them. And they make for really good games that are pretty easy to teach because I can kind of teach as I go for the most part, you know. That's true because no one's going to complain. Oh, I didn't know that rule. Yeah, right. 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 You're like, well. Yeah, if I'm not teaching you, I'm, I'm hurting me too, right? So uh, cooperative games, my number four. Are you not entertained? I thought that as soon as he said it too. All right. My number four is super generic, and for some people this is number one, but it is not number one for me. It's number four, and that's the designer. Uh-huh. All right. Um, so. Oh, fanboy much? Well, no, well, he's, I don't know if he's my favorite Come designer, on, but he's in my top five for sure. Come on. He's also one of the most recognizable I'm gonna designers. I'm going to a picture of Katala up there. That's going to be next. Bro, well, Katala. Yours is probably more specific. His is just going to say Bruno Katala. Yeah. <laughs> ah, all right. That's how we're going to do it. All right. <laughs> no, listen. The designer now... I, we were talking about we talked about this often. Like, is there any designer who has a perfect record for you that also has five or more games? Obviously, if they have one game, sure. But there's very few designers, right? So. Like, I don't like all Eric's games, but if I see a designer's name in a box and you should put designer name in a box, that makes a big deal to me. I'm like, ooh, mm -hmm. that's interesting. Okay, I like that person's stuff. I don't like that theme. I don't like that publisher. I don't like anything else about that game. But that designer name will make me still try it. Mm -hmm. And again, this will burn me, but I'll still get a little excited about it. A good example is I played some horrible games from some great examples like Richard Borg. I re but if Richard Borg makes a game, for example, I'm like, Richard Borg made a card game? I think I'll check it out. That's just how it works. So right. you're a good designer. I will be excited about your future games. I agree. It's a good one. Number three. All right, my number three is uh, a mechanism that I really, really enjoy, um, and it is mm. it is very high up there. Drafting? You no, like it? it's. Um, I, I was. I was. The reason I was uh, having a little bit of a mental block there is because I don't think this is. This was my number one when I did my top 10 mechanisms game mechanisms way back when but it has risen I'm trying to guess variable player powers oh I don't know if that's actually a mechanism it's more like a feature yeah variable player I would powers. say so yeah well that's a hilarious picture for it, <laughs> that is fantastic kudos man on that one. Um, oh, that's beautiful but wow, they look uh, so young in that picture I know right they do but uh, variable player powers to me really can make a game sing because even though especially if they're they're balanced and even the they're not asymmetric um, they can still be balanced and asymmetric and if that, those two come together I love it because mm -hmm. it makes 
my experience with the game different than your experience from the game, even though we're still uh, going after the same goal. Hmm. And that can really be cool because that means, let's say that a game comes with 12 different player powers. That means that I could technically play the game 12 times and have 12 different experiences with the game. That's just really cool. Uh, and I really enjoy that a lot. Uh, Blood Rage is my favorite game because, well, partially because it, it instills this idea into the game. My clan at the end of the game is completely different than your clan. Right. And, and my road to victory is, or second place, which usually is what happens. My road to second place. <laughs> <laughs> on the road, I will be. I love that should be a new saying. <laughs> um, is completely different than yours, uh, and I really enjoy it when games do that. Um, I, I just don't like it where we all start the same and we all end the same. And my right. brain power was better than yours, so I won. Don't like that at all. I like being able to use my player power to gain an advantage or suffer. Whatever it might be. Well, two things. One, I probably should put this in my top ten because I really agree with you. Oh, this, wow. I'm beyond surprised. This is not... I forgot about it, all right? Cosmic Encounter? Hello. I know, but the second thing is I don't mind if you start the same, but the game allows you to build to be different than other people. Sure. If the well, game lets you get a power as the game goes by, like, sure. I can draft this guy, now I have the special ability for the rest of the game. Well, that's essentially what Blood Rage does. You yeah. all start right. the same. Right, right. But after that first stage, you're all different. Yeah, this would have been in my top five. Just dumb, stupid. I, I, what, what? I don't find out about these lists till Z tells me were you the wrong? day before. <laughs> so you were wrong. What? <laughs> all right, my number uh, three is very simple. Custom dice. If a huh. game has dice... It's another one I, was, I considered, for sure. And they're custom... I'm more excited than if they're just good old over the counter. I call them over the counter. <laughs> Boy, you're getting a lot. You of, need a prescription for these yeah, dice, baby. You gotta get a doctor involved and somebody to etch them and somebody to paint them. And then you, you go to the pharmacist and he'll be like, "Oh, uh, you, and you need fill to, this in." Oh, can, we just, can you shop around for 40 minutes? While <laughs> <laughs> you're getting a lot of mileage out of those claustrophobia pictures you took, huh? I know. Yeah. <laughs> well, every single die in this game. Even when they are regular D6s, like the combat dice, right, right, right. are custom. Yeah, I know. And it's just like, you know what? That's an extra step you took. Mm -hmm. I appreciate that step. Yep. If a game has custom dice, they don't have to be special symbols necessarily. That's not even what I'm saying, though. That's cool. But if a game is just even just regular D6s, but each face is different from like a regular pip, you know, yeah. die, man, that just looks cool. I'm just like... Yeah, I want to roll these, you know? Mm -hmm. I just want to see the different pictures come up. That's a very <laughs> primal thing. It's a very basic thing, but I still like it. So custom dice is up there for me. That's my number three. All right, my number three. It's more, wrong, because who cares? More the tool. designer uh, is I get excited about a game, and I, I, the word I used here was lineage. Um, and that's basically, hey, it's in a... It's not, I, I, I could use the word series, but it's not always a series. Mm -hmm. It could just be, hey, you know, for example, they did, we, I love Raiders of the North Sea. Okay, I'm, I'm, not Raiders of the North Sea, I do love that game. Uh, Champions of Midgard. And now they're making... Uh, a Reavers. Reavers of Midgard. I'm automatically interested and excited. Yeah. Because I know I like the other game by the same designer, same publisher. It's like in its own series. And Kemet and Cyclades... So when Inish came out, I was super pumped. Now, I didn't end up loving Inish, mm -hmm. but I was pumped about it because it was the next one of that, whatever that series was. Right. Doesn't have to be the same designer. Doesn't have to be the same publisher. Well, I guess it has to be the same publisher. Um, but the, I just love these. Now, sometimes they burn you. Like the Aaliyah series was like, good, 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 bad. You know, sometimes it burns the sheep you. Sheep games instead of a series of sheep <laughs> games. Yeah. Just thinking that one. they just made a bunch of sheep games? What? <laughs> Bad. <laughs> but <laughs> thank you. Uh, but I like, I don't know, that, that gets me really pumped. The yeah. next game from this, you know, the, the, the sequel. Well, even like it's just Rising like movie Sun, sequels, they get me pumped. Like Rising Sun follow, followed Blood Rage. That was one of those yes. things that's like, what? They're not even like really connected. They're from the no. same company. Yes. Eric Lang designed both of them. Yes. That's it. But that's all they need to say. Eric Lang could be like, there's another game coming out in this series. And I'd be like, what? Right. I would probably not be that excited, maybe, but. Slight overreaction. 
Oh, no, I thought My I number was... three, Lineage. It's good. It's good. Number two. My number two is... we got to be getting to the crossover. Probably... Crossover? What... Come on, Ken. Uh, well, Does it start with Vi? Start with what? Does it start with Vi and then Kings? No. <laughs> Does it start with Vi <laughs> and end with Kings? That's number one. A lot of people were thinking that this was... Probably thinking this was going to be my number one. But my number one does kind of play into my number two and vice versa. So... My I would guess Plastic Miniatures actually is for your number one. Theme. Oh, okay, okay. Whoa, Uzi something more than theme? Theme. Disgusting. That guy um, might make it. Is that it. a gelatinous cube that traps that dude? He yes. seems okay, though. He's largely out of it. Yeah, he'll be all right. He'll be fine. <laughs> I'm not so sure he's going to make this one, guys. But, I mean, he'll, I mean, even still, I mean, if you just Close. look at that picture, there's a story there. There's something that happened before something that's happening now because yeah, there's another shield and helmet and knife and, in there and <laughs> it's we, like ah uh, where'd that guy go and we have a possibility of some type of future outcome whether it's road a or road b or c or d whatever it might be but theme is something that i want to be able to sink my teeth into uh again i kind of said it earlier when i was talking about Oh, games or like, yeah, storyline yeah, and that yeah, right. type of thing um, where I'm not really worried about the mechanisms. I, I am not. I don't care if you give me a mechanism that I have played a bajillion times. If you give me a theme that is well integrated with that mechanism, I'm going to enjoy it more or just as much as I always have. That's probably true. Um, so probably theme true. is is just very big for me i've got a i've got a poster and i probably should have taken a picture for it i've got a poster beside my desk that says theme does matter uh because it absolutely does in my opinion and if Z you wrote give, not and then <laughs> sam erased it and if it's going on and if on. you have a game that is just a bunch of white cardboard pieces and uh, little black and white wooden cubes and all of this other kind of stuff all over the board and there is nothing there other than mechanisms then you've got yourself a gift game <laughs> a gift game i'm out gift. i'll pass because that just isn't fun while we were talking about miniatures and nice components i said games that look good are more fun to play and to me theme makes it more good horrible english but you know what <laughs> i mean on that <laughs> proper grammar number, <laughs> number two theme is more good my <laughs> second ah, 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 ah. all right my number two was something that sam largely mentioned i phrased it differently and maybe it is something different but i don't think so this is asymmetric powers the one that Tom forgot. We'll just say it that way. <laughs> My number two Our is one the one crossover. It would have been. Oh, I can't believe it. It's so uh, stupid. And in fact, I even used a photograph from Cosmic Encounter, one of Tom's favorite games. And I was thinking about using uh, a picture of Cosmic Encounter Alien Races. Right. So. You are <laughs> would you like to be the one to talk about why we both like asymmetric powers? No? All right, you just sit there in your shame then. <laughs> All right, so my number two, just the idea of having your own things you can do that nobody else at the table can do. It's as yep. simple as that. And that feels good. Feeling unique in a game. You know, having moments that you excel at something and you know nobody else at that game in that environment and that theme can do so, that's pretty cool. So that's my number two, asymmetric powers. My number two... Mm -hmm. Should have been asymmetric powers, probably. All right, what is it? All right, well, this is one where people will uh, disagree with me on, I'm sure, and that's the publisher. Straight up, the publisher. Okay. And, and I think the disagreement is that I put the publisher over the designer. And a lot of people disagree on that because the designer is one who designs the game. Mm -hmm. The problem is, is I, I find that designers, and, and again, this isn't me saying the designer or publisher is more important. I'm talking about what gets me interested in the game. It feels like, and we might be wrong, but it feels like there's a lot of great designers out there who are so great that a publisher will go to them and be like, you got a game. 
And the, and the designer was like, well, I got one in my back drawer here. And the publisher was like, please give it to me. I'll take anything. And so I feel like there's a lot of that that happens. Um, a really good example of this is Calliope Games did that great designer series, or Epic mm -hmm. Designers, whatever they were called. They went and got games from some of the best designers in the business, no question. And they're almost all bad, in my opinion, obviously. Right. But they were not like fantastic games. I mean, Eric Langman was okay. I gave it, I think, a six, while Blood Rage is like a 10. You know, it, it's, it's that much better. So the publisher really matters to me. So especially publishers who consistently put out excellent games. So I use Stonemaier Games, but there's a lot of companies out there that they consistently put out great games. There's a lot of publishers who they're like, hey, I got a new great game. Uh, whatever, I don't care. Mm -hmm. But the publisher is a really big deal to me. You know, um, There's a lot of publishers also that bring to bear not just their publishing knowledge and connections, but a lot of development. Yeah. That goes yes. into these games. You know what I mean? Just getting an Eric Lang game might not be enough. I know he's very smart at what he does and extremely, you know, well versed in it, but games still need to be developed. You know, yeah, they you still need to be workshopped a little bit. And some publishers know know that and, yeah. and really invest in that. That's part you of don't, it. You right, and, and because of that, there's a lot of publishers who when I hear that they're coming out with a game, I might love it. Sure. I can list publisher after publisher of companies I like. I like the people who run them, but I'm not excited about the game until I know more about it. Right. But there are a lot of publishers, Stonemeyer, Simon's big box games, so that's like half the company, I guess, you know. Um, uh, Awakened Realms, uh, w these companies, when you s I hear the company name, I'm like, what? They're making a new game? Awesome. Days of Wonder used to be in this category until the last one. But I mean, even still, if someone says Days of Wonder is making a new game, I always go, what? Yeah, that's yeah, yeah. interesting to me a lot. So that's my number two uh, in these alternate forgetting asymmetrical powers universe for the publisher. And finally, number one. My number one, I told you, follows uh, very closely and also theme. almost in tandem with theme, uh, and that is artwork and graphic design. Wow, that's uh, artwork your number one. And graphic design, yeah, absolutely. Some people here call one. that you would put art as your number one. Yeah, there you go. They, Still think they know me better than you. <laughs> artwork of Viking. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, seriously though, if uh, if you have, uh, and it really follows into what I've already said, if it looks good, it's more fun to play, I really strongly, truly believe that because you're giving somebody something to enjoy as they're playing those mechanisms, which they should also be enjoying, if you have done your homework and, and gone through the development process and uh, trimmed the fat here and, and cut the ex extraneous uh, unnecess unnecessaries, uh, over there and and you you've streamlined it down to what we all should be enjoying the theme and the artwork and the graphic design should make all of that sing and I'm telling you uh, I've played games that I enjoyed the mechanisms but I looked at the artwork and I said I, I, I was thinking maybe I didn't say it but I said what a travesty because you didn't put enough money into it to hire somebody that could do your mechanisms and your game design justice you just turned it over to, it looks like, uh, a, a high school kid in detention somewhere uh, drawing, scribbling on a notebook. Um, just, that's, that just, it doesn't make me mad, uh, but I think to Makes myself, me mad. I think to myself, wow, so much could have been done with the artwork and graphic design if you would have just uh, paid a little bit more cash out there and bought somebody who, know, who, who knows what they're doing. Um, so artwork and graphic design, I mean, when Vincent Dutrait, uh, artwork is on the box cover, I'm in. Now, it, turn, it might turn out that I'm not, I don't like the game, I don't like the mechanisms involved or whatever, but I, I will tell you this, the artwork on the outside of the box and what's happening in the game, that is an immediate draw-in for me, uh, more often than not. Um, and he's not the only one. I just got through uh, reviewing a game uh, that was, uh, and I'm not going to... Um, Matt Franklin, I think, is the guy's the guy's name. Did an awesome job with uh, with the uh, illustration of uh, fleecing fleecing Olympus. Um, that I mean, and and it's great. It's just a little card game, but the theme, the artwork, 
draws me in a little bit more. It's it, I, theme and artwork, graphic design on any, any given day, those two could be could be flip flopped. Right. But uh, because I think they really do work so much in tandem together. But uh, though artwork, graphic design is a huge thing. It's the first thing you see uh, in the game before you see anything else. You see artwork, and it's either going to grab you, or you're going to say, "Yeah, we'll, we'll see." Right. I like to do my unboxings with my eyes closed, actually. <laughs> You're just feeling the components? Mm. These are nice mints. <laughs> trying to figure out if this is your number one also or something similar, because you're a big art guy. Uh, I already put Stark and Beautiful in there to basically take over for all of that. Got it. So what is your number one? My number pandemic. one is... Pandemic and the title. <laughs> <laughs> put it up there for me. <laughs> okay, but that is, but I am not saying. Oh my word! I am yes, not you saying are. Oh Bruno Catala. That is Bruno Catala, by the way, if you don't know what he looks like. Um, favored a designer or designers. Not favorite, I purposely did not write favorite. He is my favorite. A designer I already am a fan of, is basically what I meant. Same thing as Tom said for, for his. Um, if it's. Bruno Catala, yes, absolutely. I'm excited more so than that exact game with his name missing from the cover. You know, if it's Antoine Boza, Eric Wang, if it's um, anyone who I know is who who I know whose games I like, you know, who ex excites me because of what they've done in the past, because of their process, because of their style, because of whatever. That is the most exciting thing. You know, it's like going to a bookstore and picking up a book, a sci-fi book has a cool cover, and the writer is some unknown, it might be a great book. If the writer's one of my favorite writers, I'm more likely to enjoy it. That's all there is to it. I would argue that a writer in a book has more importance on the, that book than the publisher of the book does. Sure, absolutely. And there is editing, a, an editing process. Yeah, but, but editing but a that, writer is not the same as... But that writer is also, from what I understand, a lot more involved in that editing process than, say, a designer is once they sign over a game. Um, so, yeah, favored, a favored designer of mine is my number one thing. You know, it's the most exciting thing about a game. He didn't put Matt Leacock, at least. <laughs> Matt Leacock... Um, Holding Pandemic. <laughs> I, like a, I like a lot of his games, but I'm not even sure if I would say Matt Leacock is necessarily in that category for me. You know, Matt Leacock has done a couple of games I really like. Yeah, no, that's true. But for his amount of games, he's got about 10 designs or so. I'm not sure. I'm, I, I might be wrong. I don't like about half of them. Yeah. yeah but I one of don't them like... I don't one. like, I mean... That they're just okay, you know. It's not that I despise any of his games. I think they're all all right. But, you know, like, you know, number to number, basically. Like, if this is an album, I like more of these songs if it's Katala or, or you know, one of these guys. So, yeah, but I, I would do anything I think for Leacock Brown. would still be on your album, though. Yeah, but I mean, again... That's the bonus he's, track. He's it's just called Pandemic. your favorite Pandemic. game of all time. <laughs> he is, but... That's like getting excited about, uh, I'm not saying Matt Leacock's a one-hit wonder, but it's like there's a band that had one amazing song and the rest of the songs on that album weren't that good, and they come out with another CD. CD. Um, I'm well, not that... didn't say LP. What is this technology I'm we are speaking of? I'm not that excited of. by, you know what I mean? That's the thing. But ACDC comes out with a CD. They've been making the same song for three decades. I'm still more excited about that CD. That's actually, that's not. That's all. not erroneous. <laughs> no. Okay. All right, all right. Let's go to my number one. Not, there's, <laughs> all a lot, right. there's a lot more theory that went. My number one is a crossover with Sam. On like four of the things he said, Ooh. I just combined them because here's so what the thing. What you're saying is I'm verbose. When I'm going through, Herdy. no, 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 no. Because your like art <laughs> was a combination of my box cover and box back and stuff. Sure, sure. Um, but if I'm walking through conventions, which is where I see a lot of new games, or wherever I go, if I go to a store. For me, table presence. Hands down, the number one thing that excites me about a game. Now, the table presence includes, you know, miniatures. It includes how the game looks. But I want this game to look good on the table. Okay. That gets me excited. If I walk by and there's, like, mountains of pieces and um, there is, uh, 
miniatures mm -hmm. and even wooden pieces. Like, uh, for example, Capstone Games. I'm not a huge fan of Euro games, but if I walk by uh, and I've, I've seen some of the Euro games and there's like rows and columns and grids, different things baby, and grids. charts. Table like, presents. Ooh, look at that table. There's grids on it. We'll get a picture of table presents up here eventually. <laughs> so like Fireball in there, right? Fireball, when you put it on the table, just looks amazing. There's, there's, it's just full of pieces and stuff. I love that about games. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, I've been burned by it, but the fact is, whether it's a Meritrash or a Euro game or whatever it is, those always get me more excited than if I see some people there playing cards. Or if I see people playing a party game. Those may be great games. I'm certainly willing to, to play those games and try them out. But you get me excited, I walk by and I see, what's that... Uh, mech game, GD40K, or what was that called? GKR. G GKR. Uh, GKR. G I remember Killer walking Robots by, and I was like, what is this, you know? Yeah. That's like uh -huh. above and beyond a game. That almost looks like a different hobby, you know? You walk by that table, you're like, are y'all shooting a miniature film? <laughs> you know, it's like crazy looking. Yeah. Right, but that sort of thing really gets me into it. You yeah. know, when you walk by and you just see mounds of miniatures, or a big Euro game like Brass, the new Brass Lancashire. I still stop every time I see people playing. I'm like, that looks really good. I just like that whole table presence and just wrapping it all together. I might be wrong. The game might not be good. But that was all my things that get me excited about a game. And that's definitely table presence. That's a good call. So what are things that you think we forgot or you thought we should have said? And we'll quick go over them. So tell me in the comments and I'll read them off to these guys. Sam, why isn't Vikings on your list, you liar? Um... <laughs> We really, I really thought Vikings would be on your list. 11, number 11. <laughs> That's your out, baby. Anytime you forgot I, something. I, I think Vikings falls under number two and number one. I, I really do because I, I'm not automatic. I mean, if, if Vikings come, I mean, there have been some Vikings games that have come out that I've been like, not touching that with the 10 full cattle prod because it's not going to be fun. I still put them on your nope. desk. Photos or it didn't yeah, happen. You do. <laughs> I but I mean, it, so I mean, Objection. Vikings is is one of the themes I enjoy. Yes, but it's not automatically going to make me excited about a game. What about legacy games? It falls within the storyline aspect for me. Legacy games, but do again, not get me excited. Legacy games don't necessarily produce excitement because, unless it's Pandemic Legacy. Pandemic Legacy, the next one, season three, whatever, that will get me excited, yes, because I'm already invested in that storyline. Okay. But right. another Legacy game that comes out, I don't know what they've done. I don't know what aspects of Legacy things that they're doing in the game. I mean, I got burned once on a, on a Legacy game, and that has... wisened me up. <laughs> yeah, for me, Legacy, you saying, like, oh, here is... Uh you know, a trip to Mars legacy. I'm, I'm not any more excited by that than if you say, here's trip to Mars. It's a, it's a, I don't know, a mechanism, any mechanism. It's a, it's a Yahtzee style dice game. I'm not any more excited by one of those than the other. Someone asked Z, why did you not mention time length? Shorter I'm not games. that worried about that. Uh, uh, that's more of a stereotype we just make up for Z. Yeah, no, I mean, I'm not any more excited by a game that's 20 minutes than one that's 90. Um, or vice versa. I, that doesn't matter. If it's a 20-minute game designed to fill 20 minutes, and it does it with great artwork, an interesting mechanism, all those things I talked about, that'll be a great 20-minute game. If it does the same thing in 90 minutes with great artwork, fantastic mechanisms involving all of those things, then that'll be a great 90 minute game. That doesn't really matter. What, what about, about metal coins? What about 360 minutes? Then it has to be really good at those things I mentioned to be worth that time. You this is like I mean? the thing that never ends. It has to have. <laughs> You know, let's see. It has to be a racing game. If you pay me twenty dollars, it has to be a drafting game. I'll You're set up a TI. Ten points. I'll set up a TI four game, and yeah. we'll pretend we played it, so that you can like. We're racing to ten points. It has to be a drafting game. All right. What about one we versus draft many? Draft our different abilities. Did anyone consider that, that? We can do. No. Okay. It has to be a horror setting. Sam, someone wants to know why you... Space can be Me horrific. in that scenario is horrific. Yes. It has to have expansions. Sam, someone wants to ask. Got it. Uh, why you didn't pick historical? Because uh, you've mentioned a lot that's something you like. Again, that, that lumped in under theme. 
lumped in underneath. Yeah, he loves that. All right, yeah. someone mentioned player aids. That's nice. That's a good one. I think a game that has player aids is very important. No, nah, they got to be good. They got to be good player aids. I like player aids. They just don't and get me excited you, about a game. Sometimes you don't know if the player aid is good until you've played the game. Sure. I think a player aid is one of those things that might not be exciting, but it's certainly appreciated. Yeah, How yeah, about yeah. about that? Yeah, I mean, no. They, they Top actually... 10 appreciated things in games. <laughs> we'll get to that later on. Yeah. All righty. Well, we're going to end this here because we're back in like 50 minutes uh, with our back talk. And we'll see you guys then. Ah, but oh, yeah, that's I'll our top it, 10 I'll exciting things in new games. If you disagree or you have things you want to say, leave them in the comments. We'd love to see them. Until next time, though, I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Z Garcia. Thank you, everybody. Sam Healy. We'll see you on the flip side. Take El care. Flip side.